welcome to this issue of Discovering Truth at the Movies. Hi, my name is David Lance. Today, I want to begin a, a new series uh, that I'm going to be using uh, various issues from my newsletter, Conversations with the Culture, to uh, introduce a booklet that I've written called Discovering Mere Christianity at the Movies. It's an anthology of, of those various issues. So I'm going to use material from the following sources. Uh, Lewis's Mere Christianity book, various movies, Bible verses, and events in the world and uh, culture. My goal for you is to help you see how to integrate ideas and thoughts from these different things to create a synergy of new ideas that helps us better understand God and our relationship to him. I hope you'll take time to learn more about uh, how you can get my uh, booklet, Discovering Mere Christianity at the Movies, by going to wisejargon.com slash at the movies slash Discovering Mere Christianity at the Movies. Today, we're going to be using two movies about Moses. First, The Ten Commandments, starring Charlton Heston, and also Exodus, Gods and Kings, starring Christian Bale. We'll use both movies to help us set up a question that C.S. Lewis tackled in Chapter 1 of Mere Christianity, which was, Does God Exist? We'll tackle this question by learning about the law of human nature. And so, um, mere Christianity. Well, what is a synonym for mere? I would say that a good cinnamon, synonym is the word basic. And so, let's start with the basics. So, a question that has been asked down through the ages is simply the question, does God exist? Now, to answer this, uh, I might want to ask you to consider examples of several things that uh, we take for granted every day. So to begin with, let me ask you this simple question. If you were to jump into a mosh pit, what would you expect to have happen? Well, the answer is that you would expect to fall due to the law of gravity. Now, we hope that other people will catch you so that you won't hurt yourself. But we know that uh, there is this natural law called the law of gravity. All sorts of things obey the law of gravity. Planets uh, obey the law of gravity. And so here's another question. Uh, what do male dogs do when they see a fire hydrant? Well, if you've ever owned a dog, you know, they go over and they uh, do their business on the fire hydrant. A Russian scientist by the name of Pavlov got dogs to salivate every time he rang a bell. We call that a pa Pavlovian response, stimulus response. And so a lot of things that we can say along with the law of gravity, we have the law of uh, animal instinct that causes animals to do things. So all in all, we, we talk about natural law. It's about what things always do. Inanimate objects obey natural law. Most animals do too, but not 100% of the time. And so uh, let's say uh, at, that at the start of a talk, I might be in a room of, say, 20 people, and I uh, gave out candy to, oh, I don't know, two different people. And then right about now, I decide that I go over to those two people, and I take the candy away from them, and I give it to other people. Now, my question is, is my taking the candy away from those two people and giving it to others, is that fair? Well, if you think about it. It's not fair. I tricked the two people. I only had enough candy for two people, not 20. So 18 people aren't going to get the candy. It's not fair. But think about this. How do you and I, regardless, regardless to what culture we were brought up in, even understand this question, uh, is it fair? And so C.S. Lewis says that there's this moral law that is about what people should do but don't. Here's another thought. Um, mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis writes, the laws of nature as applied to stones or trees may only mean what nature in fact does. But if you turn to the law of human nature, the law of decent behavior, it is a different matter. That law certainly does not mean what human beings in fact do, for, as I said before, many of them do not obey this law at all, and none of them obey it completely. The law of gravity tells you what stones do if you drop them, but the law of human nature tells you what human beings ought to do, but do not. And so, here's another example. 
Think of those things that appear in your mailbox. No, I'm not talking about um, uh, email. I'm talking about uh, letters that show up. Do you always open up all the letters that show up in your mailbox? Why not? You mean you don't open all the letters that show up? Well, it's probably because a certain a number of them are what we'll call junk mail, stuff that was sent out uh, just happens to have your name on it, but it's the same thing that was sent to hundreds, if not thousands of other people. But if you get a card in, in the mail, maybe it's a birthday card, or maybe it's a get well card, or something of that nature that was sent from a person that knows you personally, and you know them, you're much more likely to open that one than you are uh, to open junk mail. And so, one of the things that we find uh, from Acts 17, 27, that there's this evidence that God exists. We all know that he does exist because he's written each of us our own personal letter, letting us know he's there, inviting us to let him into our hearts. It's called a conscience. It is for this reason that Paul writes in Acts 17, 27, his purpose in all of this is that we should seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from one, any one of us. And so uh, think of the movie, uh, The Ten Commandments, and how might they have answered the question, does God exist? Well, you all might remember Charlton Heston in the 1956 or thereabouts movie, The Ten Commandments. Uh, Moses meets God at the burning bush and is commanded to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. Having run away from Egypt 40 years previously, he has been transformed from a brash, I can do anything leader into a shepherd who is fit only for leading sheep. After facing down Pharaoh as God sends the 10 plagues against Egypt and leading the Hebrews through the Red Sea, Moses meets God on Mount Sinai to receive the 10 commandments. Throughout the movie, he must struggle against taking action in his own strength as he learns how to rely on God to redeem his people. Remember, it's not it's God, not Moses, who comes up with the Ten Commandments. Did you really expect that Moses could have written all of them by himself? Probably not. There's another movie that's more recent. It's called Exodus Gods and King Kings. Now the plot line is pretty much the same, but Moses, the, Mo the Moses character has a harder time letting God direct him. In one passionate scene played uh, where Moses is played by Christian Bale, um, God shows up as a 10-year-old boy. Moses, a former general in the Egyptian army, has a con conversation with God and in a fit of anger says, what do you want me to do then? Nothing. And God, as the little boy says, for now, you can watch. Throughout both movies, the audience is reminded of two things. First, the Hebrew people desperately await a redeemer who will rescue them from bondage. Second, Pharaoh thinks of himself as God. Thus, the stage is set for a battle over who truly is God, the governing state in the guise of Pharaoh or the God of Moses. And so let's think about some things that have been in the news recently. As I record this, it is April the 14th. And in the last week, there have been all sorts of news about how China has been locking down people in the city of Shanghai and others. Now, you perhaps know that China began using social media scores to shame people into behaving as the state believes people should. They've created a rating system called Sesame that not only considers a person's financial credit rating, but also tracks unsocial behavior. For example, failure to return a rental bicycle to its proper location reduces your social media score. But by performing good deeds like giving blood, you can increase your social media rating score. Well, the New York Post has reported some disturbing footage that captures the, the moment of ordinary citizens in the city of Shanghai in China, which has a population of 25 million people, as they appear to start screaming out of their windows after being forbidden from leaving, uh, for, from leaving their houses for over a week. The world's third largest city has been under total COVID lockdown since April 5th 
with food supplies said to be running low as China's government struggles to cope. Using their social media rating scores, those who attempt to violate the lockdowns can be tracked and punished. But that's not all. Uh, back on February 18th of uh, 2022, Bloomberg News reported that Canadian banks started freezing bank accounts of people connected to the truckers' pro protests that was going on in uh, Canada. The banks were reportedly working under orders from Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau. Trudeau. The move uh, came just as the, Justin Trudeau invoked the Emergency Act in Ontario, Ontario province for the first time in the country's history. The act was um, uh, created back in 1988, but was used for the very first time by Trudeau in February of 2022 against the truckers. Now, here's another story that has been in the news recently uh, about Elon Musk and Twitter. Quote, Given that Twitter serves as the de facto public town square, failing to adhere to free speech principles fundamentally undermines democracy, Elon Musk posted to his 80 million Twitter followers on March 26, 2022. Quote, what should, we, should be done, he added, before continuing in a follow-up tweet, is a new platform needed. You see, since 2020, Twitter began to shut down legitimate news stories, effectively silencing those who disagreed with either big tech or, or Biden, uh, the Biden administration. Perhaps the biggest thing that Twitter shut down was any news about Hunter Biden's laptop, uh, which has now become uh, reported by the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, and others who have now begun to realize that that was real news that they and Twitter shut down along with Facebook and other big tech opportunities. Now, remember I said that in uh, the 10 commandments and Exodus, God and Kings, Pharaoh says, I am God. You see, Pharaoh really thought he was God. Moses said, let my people go. Is the government in our day trying to be our new God, whether it's China, Canada, or the United States? Here's a question for reflection. What does it take to stand for God's word when everyone else says, don't bother? Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Discovering Truth at the Movies. I hope you'll consider looking uh, for my Discovering Mere Christianity at the Movies. You can find it by going to wisejargon.com slash at the movies slash discovering mere Christianity at the movies. I hope you'll consider sharing this with your church youth or young uh, adult ministries. And you can also sign up to get my weekly podcast at davidlance.podomatic.com. It's called Discovering Truth at the Movies. And so uh, uh, you can learn more about my other ebooks that I will eventually get around to talking about at wisejargon.com slash at the movies. Well, thanks so much. And until next time, God bless. Mm -hmm.